Today I want to take you through the process of drilling out and deckling my enclosures. Today I want to show the process of going from a blank white enclosure to a drilled out and deckled enclosure. Uh, it's really simple to do. I don't want to waste too much time talking about it. So let's go down to the workshop and I'll show you how it's done. Today what I want to do is just go over how I go about drilling out these enclosures. Um, I've got one little box here. I'm actually going to do about, I don't know, five or six of them at this time, but I'll switch between uh, all the bits on this one and show you guys the process from start to finish. Uh, I'm going to finish it off also with putting the decal on and showing you the uh, lacquer that I put over top of it as well. So before we get started, uh, this is the uh, 1590B case that I would normally get from my online supplier, which is Tata Electronics. I'll put the link down below. Um, they come powder coated. I order all mine in white. Um, they also come with the screws in there. So the first thing we got to do is actually take these screws out of this. So I'll just do this and uh, we'll be on our way. So we got our screws out now and you can see they don't powder coat any of the inside of the box. And we'll take this piece and set it aside. So the next thing we want to do is take our template, which for me it's just these uh, graphics printed out on plain white paper. I'm going to print out uh, this guy here for my red 2 pedal. Uh, this is going to act as the template, the top template for my um, drilling uh, process. So we'll go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so we've got our template, we've got our enclosure top, and we're going to tape this on. And the way I like to do it is just find a good centered area here. Somewhere like about there. Tape one over this side. Over this side. And we'll just do this one for good measure. So now we have our template on top. I've already fed my uh, drill press with my, I believe it's my 932nd bit, uh, which is used for potentiometers. Um, I'll go through just quickly the other um, common sizes for components that you're going to be drilling out. As I said, you have 930 seconds for your potentiometer heads. Uh, these are like the little alpha potentiometers. I don't have one right on hand, but uh, I'm sure you're aware of what they are. Uh, up here, we're going to have an LED. LEDs are one quarter inch. We're going to have a true bypass set up for a three pole double throw foot switch here. That foot switch is going to be drilled out at 1530 seconds. On the sides, we're also going to have a power jack down here, which is also going to be 15, 30 seconds. And our audio jacks on the side are going to be 3 8 uh, Sometimes you might run across some different sizes for audio jacks, like the big uh, black audio jacks. The plastic ones, I think, are 7 16 of an inch. Um, also some smaller power jacks you might see 5 16 and finally uh, one of my pedals here has a switch on it uh, this guy here has a mode switch and that is normally uh, 15 64 so I'll put those up on the screen now and also put them in the description below but that is the values that I commonly use for drilling out my enclosures so right here I have a shop towel just over top of the the bed of my drill press um, this is just to protect scratching anything in here. Um, I could also have used a vise to hold this down. 
here and put the shop towel over the vise. Um, I find that it's not a very quick process using something like this. It's good when you're doing your, your side drilling, but the top, you can move it around a lot quicker if you uh, just use your hands. Or in my case, what I like to use is a quick clamp like this. Uh, it just allows me to make sure everything's set properly. Uh, one last thing, just going back to the drill bits. I'm using metal drill bits. So you'll see uh, just quickly the difference. This is a metal drill bit. I, hopefully I can get the top of it in there, which is the most important thing. Don't use these guys here. You see the spike at the top. That is a wood drill bit. So with that, I'm gonna drill out the potentiometers for this guy. Um, I think we're ready to go. Uh, normal process for me is I like to eyeball the center of the drill bit somewhere like here. Then I just simply take my quick clamp, clamp it down, and then do a quick eyeball again. Everything looks good there, so I'm going to go right ahead and drill out this first potentiometer hole. So that's excellent. I can then quickly remove my quick clamp. I got a lot of shards here, which I'll just dump off, and I can take this paper towel, quickly dump that off, clean off my drill bit a little bit, and we are good to go for our next one. So here, this is a three pot pedal, so I'm going to center that up again, grab my quick clamp, get it in there, nice, and we'll just go again. So you just want nice, smooth drilling. You don't want to go through them too fast. You'll end up uh, getting something slipping or maybe not getting a clean cut. So I'm through all my potentiometers. At this point, I want to change out my bit, easy enough. I'm gonna to go to the quarter inch bit, if I can find it here. Quarter inch, which is going to be my LED at the top. I'll just check to make sure I'm gonna get that all the way through. Just increase that a little bit. Okay. And it's the same process for this guy as well. Just want to get it somewhat centered. Like that. I'm just going to quickly clean off my dust on my protective goggles. That's a good thing to say. You should always use these guys when you're drilling. So to do this guy here, which is my foot switch, uh, I'm going to use a step drill bit. I want to get that to 1532s. And a Sharpie. Mark my drill.
So now that I've got the top drilled out, I've got to do the side where the power and audio jacks go. You can see I've already went and just eyeballed these locations. The main thing is I want my power jack situated down here out of the way. And then my two audio jacks are going to be directly across from each other uh, a little bit above. What I do to eyeball the audio jacks is I just set my switch in there and just make sure I'm slightly above it. They're not going to usually run into each other anyway, but uh, I just want to eyeball it to make sure it's, uh, it's good positioning. Also, because it's a little bit awkward to clamp these down, I don't know what I'm going to get when I drill them out, uh, whether the drill will slip or not. So I use this punch here to punch out where I'm going to uh, be drilling. And this is just pressure. I apply to the punch and I'll put a little divot in each of these spots. And that just allows the drill press to sit in there. I don't have to worry about it slipping out and maybe scraping my, uh, the side of my pedal. Okay, and that is my power adapter slot. I can quickly check that, hopefully. Got one handy. Yeah, you can see that's gonna sit in there nice and even. So switching the bit out now to the one that's gonna have my 3.8 size on it. And I'll tighten this guy up as well. And as you can see, I've marked off the spot on the bit where my 3.8 is. It's a little bit easier to see this when you're drilling. I could just count, but you know, this is, works just as well. And I'll dump all these out. And we'll go ahead with the side drilling here. And there we have it. So uh, this was an easy one to drill out, a power jack, audio jacks, foot stomp, LED, and potentiometers. So now that we've got this done, I'm going to uh, take it upstairs out of the shop and we'll look at how I put my enclosure graphic on top of it. Uh, works very similar to how you would put a screen protector on a cell phone, but I'll go through that in the video anyway. And uh, then I'll show you how I spray these um, just to make sure everything is protected after the fact. Okay, so we're back from the workshop and we've drilled out our enclosure here. And now what we need to do is put on our decal. So this decal here is printed out on some Avery shipping labels. I'll show you that there now. Uh, 7665 Avery shipping labels. Um, I've Got another video on this on how, how I created these uh, decals for the enclosures. I'll link that above now as well. But I've uh, printed out my decal. I've now cut it out to size as well. And I'm going to just take you quickly through the process of how to cleanly get this on your enclosure. So the first thing we want to do is just clean off the enclosure, make sure there's not no dust on it. I use these uh, cloths that I use to clean my glasses. I find they don't leave as much dust residue. Uh, I've already kind of been over this a few times, so I think we're, we're probably good to go. But if you see anything on there, little burrs of metal or anything from the drilling, um, definitely want to get those off before you start uh, trying to put on your decal. So the first thing I want to point out, these come in a neat by uh, 11 sheet. I print out usually multiple at a time. 
One thing that you want to try to do when you lay them out is uh, the sheet has a slit through the back of it so you can uh, easily peel off the backing. Uh, you just want to make sure when you lay these out when you're going to print them out that each one of your decals is going to have something where you can actually get the sticker off easily rather than having to try to pry them from the corner. So if you've ever put on a screen protector on a cell phone, uh, this is definitely uh, the same process. What you're going to want to do is line it up. I've got the, the dots there and I've got enough light here that I can see that they line up properly over my uh, drilled out locations on my enclosure. What I then do is I simply put a couple fingers where there's no ink, make sure I'm in line, and then I lift up one corner and just roll the sticker down. Now that I've got that all done for alignment, I use a plain piece of paper and I just put it over my sticker and ensure everything is pressed down properly on the small piece that's already stuck to the enclosure top. And the reason I put this plain paper down is if I was to do this just with my finger, I'm going to smudge that ink. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that before you've put your clear coat on. So now that I've got that section down, what I'm going to do is keep my plain paper on there and grab something like this to um, push down the remainder. So I'm going to lift up here. I might have to do it like this first just to get it started because it's cut on a slant. I'm going to pull that like that, put my sheet of paper here. Make sure I cover all of the decal and push down with my straight edge. Okay. So now the sticker's on. Uh, I'm not sure if you can pick it up in the video right now, but there's little bubbles underneath, nothing too major. It just means everything's got to be pressed down. So I'm going to use the same process with the plain paper and I'm just going to use my fingers and try to press out all those little bubbles to get it stuck properly to the enclosure top. It's never going to be perfect, but uh, you can get it looking pretty, pretty good. And then also once you put a lacquer over top of it, um, those bubbles will become a lot less noticeable. You definitely want to pay specific attention to the edges because you don't want those to lift up. You want to make sure they're stuck down really well. And also around each one of your drill holes. You want to make sure it's stuck down well there. So just one last inspection. I see a couple spots I missed. One right here and one right here. And that's pretty good there. So we're almost done with this one. Uh, what I got to do now is cut out all the holes here for the uh, components to poke through. I just use a small X-Acto knife for that. And uh, it's a pretty standard process. I don't think I have to go over it. Once all my holes are cut out, I'm going to come back with this clear gloss and I'm going to do two coats of it to just protect those edges from lifting and also protect that ink from the inkjet uh, decal to not smudge or anything like that. Normally the way I'll do it is spray from one corner this way and then the opposite corner this way for one coat and then my second coat will come this way and back this way. So that's really the process, um, you know, really simple to do. Main thing is you just want to make sure your holes are going to line up and that you've pressed out as many of the bubbles as uh, you possibly can before you lacquer it. I hope you enjoyed the process of getting the drilled out enclosures completed. Uh, I've got probably five or six of these done now. I'm going to now go on to building the boards and I'll have quite a few reviews coming in the next few weeks. 
Um, other than that, I want to let you guys know to, uh, you know, if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comment section below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.